The Curry class was a design of Starship meant for search and rescue missions using heavily modified Excelsior hull components, which saw extensive service during the Dominion War. The class performed this vital mission across most of the major battles of the Dominion War, saving thousands of Starfleet and Allied personnel in the process. Measuring in at 383 meters in length, the Curry was 195 meters wide and 145 meters tall. Carrying a crew of 300, the class was capable of traveling at speeds of warp factor 9.75 and was armed with Type 10 phaser banks as well as torpedo launchers covering the ship's fore and aft arcs to provide good all-around weapons coverage. Soon after the outbreak of the Dominion War, the Allied fleets found themselves suffering higher-than-anticipated starship losses in large fleet battles. This being due to the willingness of the Dominion fleet commanders to sacrifice their small attack ships in suicide runs against key vessels in enemy formations. Thanks to Starfleet's inclusion of extensive and robust emergency evacuation systems aboard their vessels, most of the crews of the ships so lost were able to be safely evacuated. But they ran into Dominion practice of firing on survivors as a means of sowing terror and lowering morale amongst the enemy as they evacuated. Standard policy in Starfleet at the time was for other nearby ships to pick up survivors as they passed, but this still placed crews from destroyed vessels in the enemy fire line and gave other ships further into things to worry about, spreading their attention and making it easier for them to make mistakes during the rest of the battle. What was quickly determined that was needed was a dedicated ship for search and rescue in a battle, as well as performing as a communications ship as needed. But such a vessel would take time to develop, and in the meantime, Starfleet was unwilling to just write off tens of thousands of crewers' lives, which would be lost before these new ships could enter service. It was soon suggested that an existing ship be repurposed to perform the search and rescue role, while the new purpose-built design was developed. But, with the outbreak of the war, Starfleet had already reactivated the vast majority of their reserve fleet as a means of rapidly expanding their combat force meaning that finding a hull to refit was a very tall order. After an extensive search and frequent arguments over the fate of ships in the process of reactivation, six old Excelsior space frames were found to be unused and available for conversion. Little more than structural members, these six ships had been written off decades ago as requiring too much effort to bring back into service to be viable, and had been used as a source of spares for other Excelsiors for years. As a result, all six ships lacked reactors, nacelles, computers, sensors, weapons, shields. They were little more than a space frame. A blank slate. This blank slate was judged to be sufficient for the requirements, and with liberal usage of off-the-shelf parts, six new ships would have gradually emerged, featuring a radically reshaped hull geometry, with the secondary hull moved far forward, the ship's nacelles, which came from a variety of sources depending on the vessel in question, slung underneath the saucer, and significant structural reinforcement to make this all work. The new design utilized spare reactors from the Norway class of frigates. With heavy use of automation to keep crew counts low, and the ship's propulsion systems relocated to the saucer to free up space in the secondary hull to accommodate a massive series of shuttle bay complexes, tractor beams, transporter rooms, accommodation spaces, and sick bays to deal with rescued survivors from destroyed ships. The first ship in this new class, USS Curry, would enter service after just eight months of construction and be sent to the fret lines after an abbreviated shakedown cruise, which, while it did find a number of problems, failed to find any issues insurmountable by suitable application of skilled engineers and some reworking of the ship's computer systems to account characteristics of the new ship. Curry soon found herself, alongside her five sisters, deployed to some of the most intense battle spaces of the Dominion War, where she saved many tens of thousands of lives from Allied ships, as well as several hundred Cardassian personnel, in curious circumstances. 
All six of the class would take significant damage during the war, as the Dominion would mark them as high-priority targets soon after they arrived on the front lines. But damage sustained was always repaired quickly, and the ships returned to action. Despite their strange appearance, the Curry and her sisters were beloved within Starfleet due to the life-giving work which the ships performed, making them highly respected by nearly everyone with many of those they rescued swearing that, as their escape pod drifted throughout the still-raging battle around them, the sight of one of the Curry class sweeping in, tractor beams locking on, and scooping them to safety, she was the most beautiful ship they had ever seen. Sadly, these feelings of goodwill would not carry the ships over into the post-war, as Starfleet began to draw down its fleet to post-war levels. The hastily thrown together Curry class would be among the first ships on the chopping block, with the new Olympic class hospital ships largely filling the roles they vacated, as well as filling other mission profiles required by Starfleet. By 2380, all six ships had been withdrawn from service and scrapped with very little ceremony. Despite their rush design, an appearance analogous to Frankenstein's monster in starship form, the Curry class performed a vital role throughout some of the worst fighting in the history of the Federation. Being responsible for the preservation of tens of thousands of lives within Starfleet and Allied personnel, proving once again the ingenuity and resiliency of Starfleet's design bureaus, as well as the fleet's commitment to the preservation of life and the memory of the ship's service will long be remembered by those who served aboard, as well as those rescued by these plucky little ships. Thank you for watching. This has been the first video in a hot minute. Um, I just got super behind with art and had to delay uh, videos a little bit, so apologies for that. Um, yeah, that shouldn't be as big an issue moving forward, because I do quite like making these videos hopefully you enjoy watching them but i mean even if you don't this is a fun side hobby not uh a career at this point so um i mean yeah i mean you you don't have to watch them i'll probably still make them um i mean yeah i mean these these combine all my favorite things being a nerd talking to people about star trek uh star wars that kind of stuff making art all those things so really, anybody deriving enjoyment is a plus rather than a uh, intention. Um, yeah. <laughs> that being said, do feel free to give criticism because this is a hobby I want to get better at. But, uh, yeah. Where am I going with this? I feel like I've just insulted the one viewer that reaches this far by saying I don't. I make this for fun and he enjoys it, this is a plus rather than an intended feature. I mean, I don't. I, I do like that people like these, um, but also I enjoy making these, and that's the main reason. I don't know. I feel like I've gone on a terrible tangent, and uh, am, am going to end it by one viewer who listens to these. I do like you and appreciate you.